Hey guys. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Good job. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let me do a update on my Instagram. And I'll start painting uh, in a second. Uh, you can see over here my beautiful druid which was broken by my cat so the first thing we'll do is to um thank you Kujo. Uh so the first thing we'll do is to glue it together <laughs> and make it work um yeah okay Got it. Um, okay, so uh, starting. Oh, I can show you the box that I was I'm uh, working right now on. The issue with this miniature is that uh, some of the lenses, and that includes my lens from my phone, uh, makes the head look very very big. But on the camera over here, it looks pretty fine, I would say. So I'm trying to paint this box art. Uh, give me a second. Sorry, my uh, my cat is trolling me because he really wants to get in the room because the door is closed. But when I open the door, he doesn't want to come in. Actually, so you know, yeah. Hey, hey. Um, you entered Kujo. You entered the Kud of Pen competition with the one uh, diorama you did, like the one you've posted uh, on my Patreon, right? I probably posted it on your social media, but I wasn't on the social media uh, that much uh, in the um, last days. Uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I wish you a lot of luck. Much luck, very wow. Well. Uh, yeah, it's a Kapamon, something like that. I, I wanted to change it into a black cat because I have a black cat, uh, but uh, the black cat doesn't look that well, so uh, we're staying with the with the white cat. Um, yeah, so this is the box that I'm painting for myself actually. Uh, I pretty much like the gold over here, looks, looks pretty fine, but only from the front because from the back it's not painted. Um, but the box are usually yeah, no, box arts are usually not painted from the back, so um, I'm keeping the tradition. Uh, okay, so this is she. Uh, I want to paint like nice uh, pinkish, like I don't know, color shifts all around. And I think that she's missing a highlight over here, so I will maybe add it um, today later after the stream. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we will be fixing my druid because my cauty cut uh, destroyed it a little bit. Um, I honestly like it more without the stuff st stuck in the f in front, uh, but uh, I think that I will add it anyway. Because uh, I will add it because mostly because I didn't have like better idea how to uh, end the stuff without having it stuck like this and not actually. Uh, just cutting it shorter because I think that if if it was shorter it would look even uh, more strange. So yeah, we'll uh, try to place it again and bring the balance into this miniature. Uh, the transparent fabric looks extremely interesting. I've been thinking about implementing something like this for a long time, but I still can't master the courage. You should um, because it's pretty fun, I would say, and it's not that hard to paint. Uh, I know that it sounds hard, but it's actually not. And uh, like, of course, I'm. I will be releasing this miniature, hopefully this month. Uh, but um, I want to uh, like upload to the internet uh, free tutorials about painting it. So uh, 
if I will be successful, uh, we'll see how how will how will it go. Um, I will do the tutorials about painting transparencies and maybe you could use them and paint something. Um, there is this cool Warhammer miniature. Uh, I got it somewhere, but I'm not sure if I will find it. Oh, yeah. Got it. So there is this cool Warhammer miniature and she has the veil as well. I want to paint her, uh, but I got stuck on uh, sending down those the, the dress. But I really want to paint her uh, as well. So I think that I will finish this one and then I will go into painting this one maybe. Or where is the other guy? Uh, I had him somewhere. He disappeared. I had like this, um, this uh, elven, uh, like uh, invisible man in in a armor somewhere, but I'm not sure where where it, where it went. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Where is he? I think that my cat got to him as well, sadly. Okay, so I have this one and I will have this, oh, actually it's this guy, but I don't have the physical miniature in my reach. So uh, those two I really want to paint and also like those new Cities of Sigmar miniatures. I love them and I want to get some boxes and paint them as well. And I hope that uh, they won't go out of um, stock uh, in like next two weeks. Hey, me, Master. Uh, yeah, I hope that the the tutorial will be like tutorial. I don't like tutorials in miniature painting, but I hope like those videos will give you some uh, interesting insight into the topic. Yeah. So actually, even painting this dress could be cool, uh, like making it transparent. Yeah, pretty cool miniature. I need to uh, get get her done and prepare her for painting. Yeah, I knew that he is under the desk. Got him. <laughs> my ca my cats got him first. Uh, luckily, he is not broken. But it was very hard to glue him glue him together. Uh, and like I got I got like those. Um, over here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but over here, for example, uh, I have like those um, indentations because I had very big problems with uh, getting this, uh, like assembling everything so it wouldn't be wonky. And also, of course, I had to break this grass over here. Uh, I was successful in like flooding it with glue and just trying to make it stick together, but it was very, very hard to do. Uh, so yeah, but uh, he is more or less done. Um, I also have a orc, orc shaman from Warhammer, and that one I always wanted to paint also, but I moved and then I put him somewhere and I looked through my uh, new flat like three times and I just can't find it at all. Uh, but keep, keep uh, fingers crossed uh, because I really would like to paint him as well. He has like this dancing shaman with this um, with this uh, puff of smoke going through his, from from his uh, from the sky on his uh, stick. Uh, hey Stefan, uh, are you getting the lady on the horse? Yes, I want to get the lady up on the horse. Fine, like Warhammer finally is doing like the exact thing I always wanted to paint. Um, so I want to get the lady on the horse, uh, but I'm not that good in tracking Warhammer uh, releases, so I don't know when she will be online. Uh, if I will be, if I will get her, uh, maybe I will go to uh, Warhammer or like uh, Warhammer first or first or Golden Demon. But also I've heard that there it's very hard to get the tickets. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if I will be successful uh, with this enterprise. Yeah, of course the glue is stuck. Why not? Maybe this one. Mm, no. Okay. 
they sell out really fast. Yeah, I hope that like uh, I started thinking, right? Because uh, I have some following on Instagram, and maybe if I will start painting Warhammer, maybe the guys from Warhammer would agree to send me some miniatures, like before the release. But I I have no idea how to make it work, and if I have any chances to work it out. Uh, all world stuff is going to take a while to release. Yeah, but they already started releasing it, right? Like. Uh, they started releasing the uh, stuff for uh, Cities of Sigmar and uh, I think that Cities of Sigmar will be playable for Old World because this is like basically the same aesthetic. So the, the camera could be in focus today because I actually spent some time to make the makeup. Also I've noticed that uh, I have more uh, viewers when I'm... Uh, when, when I have makeup on, so I will have to use more makeup from now on. I have Oriental Stories miniature, but I can't master the courage to start this work. Transparent pants look so, uh, so difficult. They are not, actually. I have to stream, uh, stream some transparencies. It's like, guys, you basically have to... Okay, this is not the direction. Guys, you basically have to do the base base coat, uh, pro painter gluing stuff together, guys. Uh, you have to paint the base color, and then take the base skin color, mix it in proportions one to one, base base uh, like the trousers color with the base skin color, mix it together. Uh, and then just in the middle of the surface paint this uh, half half uh, half skin tone color um, on okay i think that i got it right hopefully it will stick together i'm very unsu unsuccessful with gluing stuff together so we'll see um hey hey don hey 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 skaven um oh knows oh knows what did, did i did something i didn't glue my hands together so this is a plus i would say it's it won't stick together there's some something is not working right mm. okay Maybe I think we'll keep it from snapping off again. Mm, maybe, but also the pin means that I need to do more work, more work on this one, and I really don't want to. So I will just keep my fingers crossed, and I will try to keep it away from my cuts, to uh, so they won't have another opportunity to break this guy. Okay. Hey, thank you for the follow. Guys, if you have uh, unused um, Twitch Prime, Amazon Prime subscriptions, please use them on me. I really want to be a successful streamer. <laughs> me man said, why pin one more glue? Yeah, exactly. Also, if the glue doesn't work in the... Um, place you can you have the very nice example of that like you can observe the pristine technique over here if the glue is incorrect and it doesn't want to stick you can over glue everything around it and then build the the thickness of the glue uh, which will protect uh, the the unstable place uh, the unstable surface so this is usually my technique and that's why I try to be very um, careful to not break stuff. Yeah, I started putting like my painting stuff over there, like behind me, actually over here. But I forgot to like just after like last stream, my uh, cat just decided to eat this, drew it from the from the desk, so I didn't have the time. 
Um, yeah. This is this is my method of work of working, especially with the stuff like that. <laughs> I once uh, finished painting a miniature, and I was very very happy with it. And then um, I had very long hair uh, at that point of my life. They were like um, up to my butt, so they were very very long, and uh, I had a very high desk also. And I, I was very happy about this miniature, I took the pictures um, and uh, I posted it on Instagram and then uh, I just swooped my hair um, near the desk and then sat down on the chair and then I heard the crack and it turned out that my hair just randomly decided to take the miniature with, with, with them, with it and put it on my chair under my ass uh, so uh, i basically sat down on this miniature and i had a very pretty colorful puzzle to put together like five or six elements and the, the miniature was a 32 millimeter uh, miniature with very thin ankles and she was standing on one one leg uh, so i had to put in very very thin um, very thin pin and uh, try to like make it work and I of course I made it work but it was very time consuming yeah <laughs> sadly the the fate was very mean for me um, yeah okay so I don't know this this one is drying up uh, I can show you like again this one uh, I struggled a little bit with this veil because I didn't have uh, like strong idea for her and usually when I had I don't have strong idea like for the interpretation, I, I struggle with, with the painting because I don't feel the passion passion to finish it. And then I just randomly put those colors into the veil and it became pretty and interesting for me. So uh, I really want to finish painting her. Uh, also, I posted a picture of it on my Discord, but my camera in the phone cannot take proper pictures so it looked very very bad over there and I'm happy that it looks much better over here. Uh, evening Nalan. So yeah this is this one um, and those Warhammer miniatures are very very cool. I, I really love them. Hopefully I will find the orc. Uh, okay so we have the wet palette. Ooh head palette. Taking good pictures is harder than doing good paint jobs. Uh, this also, uh, not everyone likes taking picture. I personally hate it. And also I found that um, usually pictures make the miniatures look worse, even if the miniature is painted well. So uh, when you actually are in at the point where you take the picture of your miniature and you are happy with the picture, uh, either you have very good camera or you are a very good painter. Uh, yeah. And I remember when I started painting, I was very irritated because like my miniatures looked much worse on on the pictures and I just couldn't make it work. And uh, it turned out that I just had to paint better. <laughs> it was kind of sad. Such uh, days always we have body, they break, maybe not glue, let there be a composition of mushrooms in your hand. Yeah, like it could be. Uh, or maybe some kind of, uh, instead of like this long stuff, that it could be like just a root, but uh, I kind of don't want to change it, change it. Uh, and also I have glued it, glued it already. Uh, no, I think I may soon be asking for help with the red hair that looks great. Uh, I have a video on my Patreon about red hair and I want to do, like, I want to make some of the, um, of the videos free so I will just uh, make it public uh, I don't know the red, red hair can be the first one uh, and I'm not sure like I don't remember if I posted the uh, the painting process but uh, I think that it's there also yeah <clears throat> taking picture is very annoying yes I agree 300 uh, percent also, I'm trying to produce my own miniatures right now and like thinking about all of those little details that can break is very um, 
I know it's very important for me uh, because I just hate like those little I don't know uh, I had this um, miniature from Inu Kingdoms Yama and she has like this crown where she has basically on like those sticks coming from the crown all around and um, I finished painting her and again this is a great story I finished painting her and uh, I wa I put the miniature, I varnished it, I put it on my desk so it would dry. None of the cuts were in the area, so I knew that it's safe. And then I started uh, tiling up my desk. I picked up a paint um, and I like picked it, I held it to uh, like two week <laughs> and it fell, fell out from my hand and it hit the painted bust in the head and it broke off like those little very tiny uh, crown pieces uh, and I've spent like an hour standing like on the on the floor just trying to um, find them and glue them back but I couldn't find them so I just decided to cut all of them out and like make them all shorter uh, like for the half of their length uh, so yeah that was pretty um, unfortunate <laughs> but what nice like I think that if you wouldn't know the story, you wouldn't know that I had to change it this way. Yeah, gone forever, F in the chat. Um, so yeah, stuff like that happens sometimes. Uh, even if you try to be very careful, uh, it sometimes just goes poop, gone. Yep. Mm, okay, so I, I think that with this one, uh, I want today to paint this white robe. Like this, it's not white. I consider it, it as white, but it's not white. It will be like this darker bluish gray. And uh, I will paint this, uh, his very fancy and fashionable back. Um, also, I can see that my cats uh, were in contact with this one because there is a lot of hair in the moss. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that Kujo or tu Tuekael on last stream advised me. I think that it was. Oh no! I made it move. <laughs> this is very bad for me. I, I think that the, the pinning solution would be the best, but uh, I will go with the other layer of, of, of glue. Sorry, guys. See, the thickness of the glue <laughs> is ri rising. <laughs> Do you think that it will work this time? Uh, we can make a bet. Three hours later, the boost is going to be 90% <laughs> glue. Um, it may be. Uh, I got like, I, I got a... Um, like this little diorama kit, uh, kit that is meant to um, to be quickly put together and just stand on the shelf, and it is like something of a Chinese quality creation. Um, but it was very cool because I got this kit, and inside there was everything I need to glue together to make it work. But also there were some tools, so I had uh, like, um, for example, there was a glue. Uh, or a little screwdriver to screw the um, little um, uh, bolts uh, where I had to sc screw them in. And uh, this glue is actually uh, this strange quality that it's very, it dries very slow and also it became very tacky. So I, uh, I was happy to see it because it's perfect for doing the spider webs. Um, yeah, Kujo, I am a big fan as well. Um, I share this uh, this sympathy. Um, optimal method for fixed stuff: pin plus 2K epoxy glue. Also, um, the uh, the the tape. Uh, if I had like this little miniature tape uh, to be able to just put around something. Uh, I would be the happiest uh, woman alive because the tape is perfect for uh, any kind of uh, repairs. Ok, 
Okay, so I will put some colors on this palette. Mm, I will start with uh, AK, uh, whatever, luminous green. I thought that is pistachio. Okay, mm, so I will start with this one. I will also add those two. And uh, as you maybe remember, I struggle with painting green, so we will just try to make it work. Uh, I have bad luck with gluing, so maybe I will have good luck, uh, like or a, a lot of luck with uh, with the greens today. Make the tape into a fabric grip. Yes, exactly. But I need to have like this tape. I think that maybe uh, like this paper, um, guys, to to take this paper painting uh, tape. You know, when when you paint the wall, you have like this paper tape to tape off the stuff. So take it, like make a little cut, wrap it around, and then just uh, glue it with more um, of this of this this kind of glow uh, that, that would make it like unmovable I don't know what kind of glue it is yeah masking tape exactly uh, green stuff world should uh, take this idea and uh, and make it work okay so we have one type of, of green green one landed uh, now we'll take this yellow green from Uptilung. Yes. And now another green will be this is turquoise. I don't want turquoise. Um, this one. More green. We have tallow green. Okay, you know, more. We need more. Mm, and light green. We'll see which of my greens is the best green. More, 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 most of them are from Uptilung, if anyone is asking. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, take one tape, uh, just cut it in pieces and you are just producing money basically mm, okay we will take this uh, tenera yellow I need to work out which pigments are in this paint and try to mix it from other paints I don't think that there is a any particular uh, reasonable um, point of finding it out uh, if I like this paint, but I'm actually curious from what uh, it's mixed. Okay, white. Soul yellow, but this is this is uh, is the soul yellow like the name for the pure pigment because I actually have no idea. Um. I'm not good with the pigments, honestly. Like I understand some of the theory and I know some stuff, but I'm not, you know, not like the PhD uh, pigmentist. Okay, and we need, oh, we need this one. I really uh, like this paint. Paints, paints green, sorry, gray. Much well. No idea. I'm very in the dark about pigments. Yeah, me too. I'm trying to, to get better with the theory. Oh, plant amber. I, I like this one as well. I need to paint more with those colors. Great. Um, uh, I think that there is like this one store um, from UK, Jackson's Art. Uh, they started doing a like TikTok content and Instagram reels 
uh, about pigments and paints and like different uh, theories from painting and it was very interesting. Okay, I've, I found my way home um, finally. Ooh, I found more green. This is deep green. Perfect. Do you think, guys, that we are ready for painting green? Ooh, and the violet. Got it. Mm. Oh, over here. Also, I need to start painting with the bigger palette and I need to work out the camera for my wet palette. I want to finish painting this guy. Started started the, the gems on SMC and turned out that I really like them, so I need to finish them. It may be the box art, like the second one, because first one was painted by Maciej Kotlinski, by Connor Shonery on, uh, on Instagram, and I want to do a another box art. <laughs> Okay, so painting green. Uh, with the green, the issue is that uh, green is sorry, not very strong. I also like the sepia from Aptainung. I think that I didn't get the sepia because it was out of stock. Uh, but I want to try that. Or maybe I have it? I don't know. Uh, I would have to look for it. Uh, yeah, so... Um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, with green, green uh, is like a pretty much transparent pigment, so it's hard to build. Uh, uh, it's hard to build um, coverage with green, uh, and that's why when we highlight green and we take the I don't know basic green, any kind of like more pure pigment green and add white to it, it becomes very desaturated and it's not that green anymore uh, so the proper or like maybe not the this is not the only way i think to paint saturated greens but the easiest way for me personally uh, is to paint the highlight as a underpainting it may be white it may be yellow um, and paint the highlight where you want it to be and then um, glaze over it uh, or just paint over it with a half transparent layer of paint um, and that layer of paint would be a saturated um, green so uh, I will try to demonstrate it right now I will just paint it plain white and also highlight some of the other detailing to create more texture uh, because I really want it to look like uh, it's a leaf. I don't think that I approached it in a correct way, but whatever. Mm. So I will highlight some of the leaves in the middle. Mm, and also the um, the half transparent layers of paint, so the glazes will work the best uh, if you will use um, pure pigment uh, over them. So the you, most of the modeling paints. Uh, are mixes of other pigments, uh, so the pigments are not pure. So, for example, to build the coverage, the company will take some kind of like covering pigment. So, for example, white is very good example for it, uh, because uh, you can see that just just a little like stroke of paint, uh, it's covering, making it lighter, uh, the surface lighter. So, a lot of companies take like this kind of pigments. Um, Earth pigments are also usually strong. Um, earth pigments, so that means that um, pigments that are dig, dig out from the earth, basically. So some some browns, some some um, brownish yellows. Um, 
they have strong coverage. For example, red oxide. Uh, this is a very good uh, example. And so they will take like this kind of pigments and they will mix in some other pigments to create this color. And that's why um, when you sometimes use some colors that are mixed um, or premixed, uh, they will become a little bit of gray uh, or they will become very brownish in the mix. And uh, the issue is that not a lot of companies actually mark uh, what kind of, like, don't, they don't label it. So on the label, you won't find any information uh, about mixes. So um, you wouldn't know, for example, like from what color is, uh, like, what color, what pigments are in this green, for example. Um, yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> Where, where I was going with this, actually. Uh, so, uh, ah, I know. So that's why sometimes glazes doesn't work because uh, you try to glaze um, and glazing is meant for uh, transparent paints because uh, you want to um, saturate something, for example, with the color. And sometimes if when you take like this premixed paint and you don't know what pigments are in, the glazing may be harder. So. Uh, for example, a lot of uh, scale, 75 scale color um, paints were problematic for glazing because they have, first of all, very strong um, coverage. So they have like those uh, covering pigments inside the mix and also they have very strong matting pigment, uh, which sometimes make the um, like texture of the paint a little bit like sand. Uh, or something like this, uh, like that, and that made the uh, glazing harder, so the smoother glaze were harder to um, to achieve. Uh, and if you will take something that is more transparent and that where you know that you have pure pigment, that's why I started painting with aptile long paints because uh, it, there is, I think that there is no information on the on the label, but on their side you can check the information uh, where all of the colors uh, are listed and all of the pigments um, are listed as well. Um, so uh, if you want to do good like easy saturation, good glazes, be aware uh, of what kind of paint you are using and uh, just be aware of the amount of like coverage it has and if it's uh, transparent, uh, if it will actually work for you. If it won't, um, just try maybe other color uh, or something like that. Uh, just get, get the properties of the paint better. Um, Minimum answer. Yeah, sure. Uh, like I will upload the VOD on YouTube as always. Uh, thank you for coming by. And so yeah, this, uh, this is like the knowledge about um, about glazing, uh, you can check out the amount of uh, like the intensity of uh, coverage by basically painting a black line on your hand somewhere, for example over here. Um, yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, I I was very happy about this table of contents. Uh, because uh, I finally found like this pure pigment for the violet I always want, uh, not this one, uh, for the violet I always like to use in my shadows, right? So before that I was using um, a Dandin Violet from Sky75 uh, Fantasy and Game Design uh, and I found out that this is basically this dark violet from Uptilung. Uh, in Uptilung it's a pure pigment and now I know that Sky75 had like this dark violet pigment mixed with black because it was darker and more desaturated than this pure pigment from AK but the shade is more or less similar. But it would be cool if the composition was written on the tube as well. Yeah, it would be cool but you know, they, they are going in the right direction <laughs> at least. Uh, I've heard that uh, AK paints um, have have their um, contents listed. I'm not sure if on the labels, but somewhere. Uh, so it's also pretty cool. Uh, okay, I will try to make glaze with this one. I think that it's it has a little bit more coverage. Uh, let's test it out. You can see over here. 
how the consistency uh, works mm, and let's try it out I need to uh, get less um, water on my brush Uh, you can see like the color I picked is very bright and I, I just don't want to go over overboard and some areas I will darken uh, even more later mm, but you can see that the shadows are staying in place and for example the dark line is not completely uh, disappearing but the lighter elements are getting saturated and they, they just basically catch some color I also think that I will bring some colorful shading to some areas of this bag. I just have to like figure it out uh, how to make it work. Maybe now this one or maybe not because I've used it on the bird and I don't want to repeat it. So maybe this one. I think that this one will be too intense, but let's let's see. Oh, I can actually take burnt amber and add it over here, make it more interesting. It's too strong, strong. We will have to um, turn it a little bit uh, down. See, it was very dark and very basically blackish over here, but after I added the stronger color it became like this interesting green mm, so i will take burnt amber and mix it a little bit with this violet paint it out on my um, finger and i will start adding some shadows over here Is obtaining like sky, sky artist. Uh, I didn't paint with uh, every color from sky artist, but I think that it's uh, a little bit better um, because some of the colors have better coverage. Um, oh, I think that sky artist also has uh, its ingredients ingredients listed. Um, to know it for sure, uh, I would actually have to take scale uh, scale artists and uh, put them side by side on the wet palette and try to paint it out. But um, if I remember correct correctly, scale I didn't like scale artists as much because they they this quality was a little bit uh, lower. Also, like, Sky70 artists uh, 
like I didn't like the fact that they were marketed like it were like they were like this pro artist uh, line of paints, high quality, where there is like this uh, usually with artistic paints there are three tiers of quality. So first one is like the student paints which are the lowest quality and they are meant for like they are meant to be cheap and uh, just to get things done for people who want to practice painting then there is like this mid tier uh, which is okay but it's not like the best quality and then they are like those actually pro artistic uh, quality paints where the pigments are a little bit better there they are mm, higher quality uh, like they are mm, not the particle of the pigment maybe a little bit smaller so they are the paints are smoother stuff like that and i feel like sky 75 was promote, promoted like this top quality paints where the quality is actually more in the mid tier and i didn't like that uh, so maybe they are not that bad for painting uh, and they are pretty okay so basically you know they, they are just a tool. All of the paints are just just a tool and they won't uh, paint for you. Uh, so you actually have to um, know how to work with with this tool, which is the paint, and how to make it work to have like the good outcome for the painting. So you can do very good painting with scale artists. Oh shit. Okay, I thought that I broke it. Um, you can have very good outcome with scale artists, you, you can have very good outcome with Abteilung, but I personally don't like the, um, this approach to market this as a highest quality paint where it probably isn't. Mm. Yeah, I would rec recommend Abteilung because I personally just decided to go this way, so you know, um, but also, I don't know, this is, uh, this is kind of, my choice wasn't, uh, dire like, wasn't directed, wasn't led only by the, you know, um, I don't know, not only by the pure quality, <clears throat> uh, but also by, like, those, um, I don't know, Concept conceptual approach uh, for the marketing of this uh, products. Color fast, bit like the artist opus brushes marketing. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I was a little bit like, I don't know, I, I've seen artist opus on and of course, you know, you can paint with a stick and as long as you are good with painting with the stick, you will make everything work. So a stick may be a good, uh, good tool for you um, if you are skilled with it. And also like any kind of brush may be good for you. It doesn't matter. Um, but I've, I was kind of like, I know, um, I thought that Artist Opus basically is a copy of any other um, watercolor um, Kolinsky painting brushes. So this the, those these brushes from uh, I'm using for painting are Rothmary and Co. Series 33. They are the same. Uh, like the profile for the painting is the same as uh, Windsor and Newton uh, Series 7. Um, basically, uh, Raphael uh, or for uh, eight for O four line. So those are created for actually watercolor painting. So I thought that Artist Opus um, is basically the same thing, but a little bit different. Uh, which all of those brushes are a little bit different. Some of them are shorter, some of them are longer, stuff like that. But actually, Artist Opus um, has. I, th I feel like their brushes are a little bit smaller than the average size of like those um, artistic lines, uh, artistic lines of brushes. And I don't feel like it's um, the perfect way to go uh, because actually the size of the, of the bristle is not that important. Um, but the, the, the belly also is very important. So if you only have like the tip 
quantity of uh, hair in the brush, um, but you pay like the same amount or even more than like this whole brush, which has more hair. And the hair is usually the biggest problem in the brush, like the one of the biggest costs, at least I think so. Um, so, uh, and actually with sometimes when you don't have like this belly uh, in your brush, it makes the painting harder because the paint dries up uh, quicker. Uh, so you have like shorter working time uh, with your brush, with your miniatures. So actually having like this bigger uh, belly and sharp tip is actually very important because you are painting the miniature with the tip and the tip is small enough to make all of the details work. So you actually don't need like to have like this uh, brushes that have like 10 uh, hair strands in the, in the brush because this one is thicker and a little bit longer, but the tip works just fine. So I don't feel like, and also art, artist opus, I'm not sure about the pricing, but uh, if I remember correctly, they weren't that cheap. So basically you were paying, uh, I don't know, I, I wouldn't personally, would, I wouldn't spend my cash on um, those brushes where, um, where they are very small and uh, at least from my experience, they would, uh, wouldn't be as, as, as good, but I didn't paint with them, yeah. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't spend my cash on it. If I, sorry, if I got a <clears throat> um, free copy, I would try it out. But uh, I think that I would stay with uh, my Rosemary's or with Raphael's. Um, uh, Artist opus uh, are a bit softer too. Uh, I find them hard to control. The bristles are kind of floppy. This is giving me an idea for a video of kind of mini with a size eight brush. So, yeah, look, but Banshee was painting with the size eight uh, brushes. Also, this video would be a kind of pricey one because the size eight brush co costs like tons of money because there is a lot of uh, a lot of hair in it, right? And the hair is the biggest hassle in the brush. Um, but I think that you could make it work. Like maybe th those 28 millimeters uh, could be problematic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, f you know, like this brush, for example, I'm painting with the brush, the size one. This is size one, guys. And it's, I don't know, I, uh, usually people consider it quite, quite big, but Look at the tip. It's very sharp, very good. Also, it holds um, the tip for a long time. And I'm a person that just goes through the brushes very fast. So, um, you know, it's a, a good, um, good, like this kind of brush is a good investment, in my opinion. I wouldn't invest in Artist Opus because I know there's not enough hair in it, I, I think. Uh, also, like this floppiness is very important. Uh, I'm not, I prefer to paint with more stiff brushes, uh, but uh, during one of my workshops, of course, because I get a lot of experience over there, um, one of my students was struggling very much with his painting and he wasn't able to do the stuff I was asking him to do. So I knew that there somewhere is that there is a problem, uh, but I couldn't put, my, put put a finger on the issue basically and I was trying to explain to him and um, and like show uh, how to work where it looked like uh, I, I went to his painting station and I took my brush and with my brush I actually painted over his miniature to basically force him to do the changes and then after I came by again, I saw that he didn't do the, the, the detailing I wanted him to do. And I didn't have my brush then in my hand, so I took his brush and I started uh, painting the stuff I wanted to paint, but I actually couldn't paint it myself, you know, uh, because the brush was uh, too soft. So something like this artist opus, I think. And uh, I was very surprised because he had like the, it was actually Rosemary and Co, I think, or maybe Raphael, but he had one of the brands I usually recommend people and I personally painted, uh, paint with it, but he got like um, 
not the same series, but just the series right next to it. So the bristle was very, very soft. And basically the bristle, bristle was going like this over miniature. Like I wasn't able to put any detail on it. Um, yeah, so brushes are actually very important. Mm. And if artist opus is very, very soft, then I would regret spending the money personally. Um, yeah. Uh, that said, uh, I uh, like before I think uh, SN Spiel, and this is like this um, board game event in Germany. Uh, I went there this year and I saw Artist Opus for the first time in, in uh, real life, basically. Um, and I was very surprised that they are so small. And because I thought that they are like the same stuff like the other companies bring to the market, but uh, slightly change and they actually are not. Yeah. So I was wondering, like, should I get them? Like before I was wondering and now I'm very happy that I didn't spend the money because they are quite pricey and I think that I wouldn't like them. Yeah, that's like the AO brushes. Nightmare, impossible to stipple with them. What is AO brush? Um, ah, Artist Opus, yeah, exactly. Like, like that. Mm. But again, like, if I didn't have like this experience on my workshops and then uh, didn't see Artist Opus in, in uh, like online, <laughs> like not online, in ERL, um, I wouldn't know if I like them or uh, if I don't like them, if I should recommend them or no. Like, I couldn't recommend them because I didn't use them right. Um, and I try to be wary about that. Uh, I missed missed it with uh, miss it. What brushes are you using? I'm using uh, Rosemary and Co. Siri Sirius Thirty Three, uh, and this is actually a new brush. But I I have this ability. Uh, my skin has a, has this kind of chemistry that is stripping the paint off. So uh, it's a new brush, but it's already stripped. I painted it like with it like for one evening, and the gold is gone. Sadly, uh, I have a affiliate code for Rosemary and Co. And but I need to dig it up. Um, yeah, but uh, I recommend them. They are pretty good. But again, like everyone, um, everyone has like. Every kind of every brush, uh, every each series of brushes, and every company has like uh, its own um, statistics, basically. So you know, some of the paints, for example, uh, have like some of the brushes have, for example, longer bristles. Uh, some have thicker belly. Um, some are softer, and some are, are uh, like um, thicker, and. Uh, each artist prefer his own way, basically, like uh, of the brush. Let's call it like that. So um, I like Rosemary and Co. Uh, because um, I personally prefer to work with a little bit stiffer brushes and longer bristle. Uh, so it's very good for me. Uh, the another one for me would be um, Raphael or. 04, uh, 8404, um, because they are also like, um, I would say that they are uh, not sturdy, Jesus Christ, uh, they are um, not thicker, what is the word? Uh, they are not as bendy uh, and they have a little bit thicker uh, belly, but they are shorter than Rosemary, so. Uh, for me, Rosemary's are on the first place, on the second place there are Ro uh, Ro Raphael's and also I, because the Raphael's are shorter, I destroy them quicker because uh, I know, I think that I allow too much, sometimes too much pigment to go into this, this element over here and with longer Rosemary's I don't have this issue 
or at least they are they survive with me longer so i prefer them also because i can actually use them for a longer time rigid yeah this is a good good word uh we'll put the code on discord when you get time i will i just need to find it out like dig it out uh, i have rosemary and co brushes but i prefer the tip on uh, the windsor uh, and newton 7 so i use them more yeah like as i said everyone has their own preferences um, I just uh, recommend uh, everyone to try out uh, at least one different brush uh, when someone decide, t tells me to, that he decided to go uh, for like those nice um, Kolinsky brushes because uh, I know that this is a bigger investment for everyone but, but also uh, if the painting would be easier for someone um with any other brand it would be actually getting the other brand would be better investment for your effort and time put into miniatures into the painting uh, so it's worth just trying out or maybe borrowing the brush from your friend if if you will have like this opportunity uh, just to see uh, what you prefer personally I went from Windsor and Newton to Element Games brushes to Escoda Reserva. Escoda is interesting for me, but I painted with Escoda like years ago uh, because I actually found it too, too, um, uh, Jesus Christ, what is the name? Um, they were too, not plastic, but too bendy. Uh, they were too soft for me, yeah. Um, but I really like the idea, like they have uh, a line of uh, brushes that uh, are meant for water coloring and they have, they are like the brushes you put together. So you have like the different end of the brush and then different tip and you can buy fancy or at least it was like that years ago, if I remember correctly, you could buy a very nice uh, handle of the brush uh, for your Escoda paints. So I liked that idea and then I tried them out and I didn't like them that much. And what about Rublev ones? Do you know them uh, for me at one of the best quality price brushes? Uh, I think that I got Ru Rublev, but also it was years ago and I found that it was uh, subpar with the quality, but I also, I am not also sure if I got the good uh, good good brush so because sometimes the brushes um they they are kind of broken right uh, i i don't like buying windsor and newton ones because windsor and newton have more of the issue with the quality for example so i am not sure if uh rublev uh was the good quality uh the, the one brush i had if it was all right actually uh, because i found that um, i liked painting with it i didn't paint with it for for a long time because it basically broke very quickly um for me and uh, i didn't want to spend more cash on this brand because uh, i wasn't that impressed after the short time of painting so i just didn't uh, buy a new one uh, but again, like this is my experience and uh, it may be not valid for, you know, uh, for more experienced painters who maybe got better, um, better luck with the quality. Um, yeah, but I've heard that a lot of people use uh, Rublev and they are happy with it, with it. so they must be good. Uh, I was actually very surprised that uh, Broken Toad went decided to uh, stop uh, selling their brushes because everyone was so... Um, like not everyone, but a lot of people were very much into those, uh, into Broken Toads and then I found out that last year they went out of business, which is sad. 
just don't get GW brushes and you're good. Yeah, I've heard that they, they are not that best quality, actually. Um, I've heard that uh, Green Stuff World games, uh, Green Stuff World, not games, but brushes are pretty good, but also I think that this is like, uh, you know, this is not uh, fact checked, but I think that they just got either uh, maybe Da Vinci and they just repackaged it, repackaged it into Green Stuff World. Mm. But I'm not sure if I got the brand right and also I'm not sure if it's uh, the true, but this is what I've heard from uh, from other painters that it may be uh, the way. But if the pricing is not much different than who cares basically, right? Um. I, for example, I don't like Da Vinci because, and this is strange case for, for me because usually I like the longer, uh, longer uh, bristle and Da Vinci is long, but it's too soft for me. And also it goes bad for after like, I don't know, one session of painting and uh, it wasn't the only, uh, you know, I, I, I had a few uh, win, uh, Da Vinci brushes. Some of them I bought myself uh, and so, you know, I invested the money into the testing phase, actually. Um, and they, all of them went very bad, very quick. So I don't personally recommend the Vinci brushes. Cool, good job. Oh, a, a good advice uh, for buying Kolinsky brushes uh, is to check uh, if the brush um, has sharp tip after uh, being dipped in the water and a little bit dried out uh, or dried off. Um, because sometimes even if the tip looks sharp after buying it, after buying the brush, uh, it may go uh, into the fork uh, shape. Uh, after uh, putting he, putting he, it into the water and then it basically is useless, right? Because you don't have the tip. So uh, it's good to check the, your brushes after buying them, um, if they are all right. And if they are not, then go back to the store or write an email and ask them for a replacement. Um, and usually they, they should replace uh, the bad brush. And this is some, something I've heard that not all people are doing after buying Rosemary & Co. Uh, so I, I just wanted to say that it's worth uh, checking out the brush. Okay, so the bag looks like that right now. I kind of like it, but I think that I would like to add some more brown to it. Uh, in particular over here to make this end of the leaf look like it's under the sleeve over here. But also I want to introduce, introduce more color interest basically to make it first of all not as bright because right now it's brighter than any other green on this on this man and we want this detail over here to stay more in the background for the rest of the features of the sculpt and so i will try to tone it down uh, slightly I consider uh, the discussions about brush, uh, uh, brushes basically as deep as the um, 3D printing uh, or pigments because usually when, uh, you, you, when you are standing in a, um, 
in a circle with some painters who don't know when you struggle with the conversation just say brushes pigments or 3d printing and the discussion will just flourish um, so i think this is one of the easiest stuff you can discuss with other painters Oh, actually, uh, if you guys own a 3D print printer and you like World of Warcraft, um, there are free STL miniatures available from World of Warcraft. Um, they created like this a little Android game called Warcraft Rumble, and you play miniatures uh, actually in this game. Uh, so Blizzard uh, just posted all of their STLs of all of those miniatures on their website and they are free to download. So if you want to paint some uh, chibi World of Warcraft miniatures then just go to their web website and uh, get them. They are pretty cool. And there is a pretty cool Onyxia for example or Night Elf Sentinel. similar over here thank you for the follow and lighter on the element I just make darker so redo the highlight over here oh sorry I, I just cannot find a good position for painting today <laughs> so I'm going to a little bit out of focus with the miniature let's make it work maybe uh, it doesn't want to work mm -mm -mm. Okay, I'm gonna try to paint a little bit colder green on one of the leaves. Um, but also, I'm not sure if it's a right direction, but we will see. Let's check it out. And the issue with the greens is that uh, the, it's very easy to make the green very artificial. So when, when I'm painting the um, natural druid, uh, I want to keep on the warmer side of greens because usually um, the real greens in the nature, um, they, they, are, they look warmer. And because when the sun goes through, uh, through the um, leaves, uh, it shines through it and make them look more saturated and brighter. And the uh, sun usually is kind of yellow. So uh, it just, first of all, like this leaves usually are on the warmer side. And then when the sun goes through them, just makes them much warmer and much more bright. So when you want to paint something natural, try to stay on the warmer side of the green because the cold greens will look very artificial and very out of place, especially if they will stay saturated. 
so yeah, it's kind of hard to paint um, paint this uh, colder green. Uh, sorry, if I said before blue, I meant green. I sometimes you know mix stuff. Um, or I sometimes say stuff correctly, but then my brain thinks, oh, Talia, you said something else. And I get very confused. Uh, I lately have issues with concentration, so... Uh, yeah, it's hard com to communicate. Uh, I added a little bit of paints gray over here and over here, and I, I think that I like where it's going. So basically I did this underpainting, which was the highlight and the shape of the leaves, stuff like that. And now I'm just going uh, over the greens, building the shadows and the colors and the saturations uh, with the different glazes of uh, more or less pure pigmented paints I'm, uh, I have on my wet palette. Uh, so this is my violet, this is paints green, this is burnt amber and they look pretty dope, I would say, I like that a lot. And then we have all of those greens over here, and I think that only this one is pure pigment and maybe this one, and everything else is a mix. Mm, I will place over this highlight over here, because it looks cool, because it's very, um, very, um, Hey Ramiskara, Ramiskara. Um, hey hey. Um, I will go over this highlight over here. It looks cool because it's very con um, confused, not confused. Uh, I am confused. It's very um, contrasted uh, with the background, but also it looks kind of artificial because of it. So. I will go uh, through it with the glaze to make it a little bit uh, more um, toned down. Uh, Ramis, okay. Hey Ramis. Uh, it's looking so good, reminds me of Eric Swinson. Uh, but because it's uh, because of Eric, yeah, he has this epic uh, epic bird. I, I can agree. Mm, a little bit too bright on the side, I think. Uh, this may be alternative uh, reality, Eric. Uh, if he wouldn't be a miniature painter, he could be a druid. Hey, hey! Hey, Alpha Dog. Okay, so this begins to look, I think, that all right, more or less. Uh, I will bring a little bit more highlight over here because. Um, we have very strong highlight over here and this just looks discontinued a little bit. And this is the same texture, the same object, so I want to tie, tie, tie it together. A little bit of highlight detailing on the on the back. Oh, also with this one, uh, I will make a tutorial about basically painting boobs uh, to explain how to paint highlight and shadow on, on breasts because that's something that people often struggle 
um, yeah, just just so, sorry. I just thought uh, thought about it uh, because I'm constantly going over in my head about this tutorial. I, I have to uh, I have to create. So yeah, we'll do that. Uh, there will be a little bit of non-metallic metal and and the transparencies and then explanation about the skin tones and also painting the shape of the eye uh, because this this miniature uh, if you won't paint the eye in like this correct um, uh, makeup way uh, the eye will look very very small and uh, un unattractive so i thought that this will be the perfect uh, perfect occasion occasion uh, perfect um, opportunity uh, to introduce some theory about painting uh, nice eyes. Okay, so stronger highlight over here. And I will try to saturate it with a warmer yellow to bring it more together at the back. Mm, one more green, this one. Thank you for the follow, down watch. Mm, I started playing a new expansion for World of Warcraft and the uh, music is so cool for the new zone which is very like druidic and it's basically emerald green for people who uh no, hey hicks um thank you for the follow for people who play world of warcraft there is uh, the new zone is emerald dream and i was waiting for ages for it so it's basically this druid um druid um zone uh, and there is a lot of uh, like this green stuff, like green stuff, lol. Um, a lot of basically people living in the a little bit like fairy tales. Um, so there are, um, of course, elves, and uh, they are different, very cool animals. Um, there is a lot of dragons, of course, um, and they are like dryads, stuff like that. And I always love the design of all of the World of Warcraft characters um, and the music is just so cool and so beautiful I just cannot uh, so I just I need to take the music and put it into my stream uh, into the background because uh, it's very re relaxing for me personally and I think that it's cool to listen to it uh, while painting yeah so I want to do that and also um, this expansion is very inspiring for me. Uh, hey, gosh. Also, this expansion is very inspiring for me. And I just decided that I identify as a druid and I want to paint druids. So in the coming future, I think that my personal projects will all be just druids. Um, I have to paint Sylvester's smoker from Inno Kingdoms and I'm just trying to figure it out how to put it in Emerald Dream, basically. Uh, yeah, it's because uh, I have the issue with the camera. It sometimes it looks okay, but then it goes just uh, not okay and I have no idea how to fix it. Uh, I think that I, uh, I cannot make it work with my OBS and I think that I need to go... Um, like put my streaming setup into Streamlabs because uh, one of my friends told me that uh, Streamlabs are very good with with making the uh, the Logitech cameras work. 
uh, or Logitech webcams, but I also think that I just need to get a better camera for my face and take this camera and put it on my uh, wet palette. Um, yeah, I want to fix it, but I kind of don't like to go over the stream settings and I always put it, you know, further away. Uh, I think it's perfect so we can continue looking at the minis. Yeah. Do you use a paper towel to run paint off the brush? Sometimes I wonder if I get bits of fibers from paper towel in my paint. This is very good information actually about the uh, paper towels. If you use, I don't uh, like to answer the question, I don't use the paper towels. Uh, I usually, um, I just try to uh, dip my brush in the water in very controlled way. So uh, I basically, I'm not sure if you will see it on my blurred camera, but I just put it in the water and I just um, roll it on the side of my cup. And I know that there is not that much water, but I just paint it off on my hand. And this is where I paint out my brush. And you can see like sometimes there is a water running um, because if it's a lot, then just it runs all over my uh, hand. And then I just don't put that much water in my wet palette and I try to control it and I can do it right now because I have a lot of experience just not using a lot of water in my painting. Uh, but also, um, instead of using the uh, paper towels, I uh, because my position for painting looks like this, I paint with my knee very high up and I put my hand on the knee and I just paint like that. And uh, I um, in the past, right now, I try to not do that. but. Uh, I was just wiping the brush on my knee, so I had my painting uh, trousers or leggings or whatever, and they were always like with those patches of paint on the knee. Uh, so that worked because it was a material, it was cotton, so it was good. And the pa paper towels may leave some fibers on, um, on the brush because um, especially the, uh, like, the good quality paper towels, the thick ones, uh, they won't uh, leave the fiber or uh, actually cotton um, paper towels, like cotton paper towels, paper towels, uh, sorry, cotton, cotton towels. You can, they look like those uh, paper towels, uh, but they are made of cotton and they do not leave the um, fiber residue. So uh, for wiping out your brushes, because you don't actually need to go through that many uh, towels when painting, um, you can just order a stack of, like stack the big roll of uh, cotton uh, paper towel, like co cotton towel, sorry, and just use it, um, you know, even for a few painting sessions, it's very, very good. Uh, or you can get something like this, I got it from a mini lab, actually. I can show it. Like this little uh, micro microfiber uh, towel. It's very, very cool. Let, let me get the the mini lab logo into the um, into the camera. Uh, I got this towel from them. I don't use it because I don't want to make it dirty, basically. So it's for me, it's useless. But I like it to like to have hang it hanging it over here, like in case I spill out some water or stuff like that. Uh, but you can get some some kind of towel like that. Like that, it's made from cotton or any other like normal fiber, and just try to maybe wash it once or twice every month, stuff like that. So it wouldn't be totally dirty. Um, do you mean to clean it or to take excess paint? I like on the on the hand. I take the excess paint only. Um, on the towel, also it's for excess paint. You should. Uh, the only way you should clean your brush is by rinsing it off in the uh, rinse it off, like rinsing it in the in the water, and then just rolling it on the side. Um, carefully, not too strong, to get rid of all of the pigment from inside the brush. And so when you take the brush from out from the water, it should be clean. Uh, it, there should be only water. Um, yeah, I, I hope that it's useful because uh, 
there are there is like those uh, little small topics uh, that usually people don't discuss that much and they may be useful for people mm. okay so I kind of should end up more detailing I think that over here this is too cold and I need to bring more wa warmth to put it basically in unison with this highlight because I don't feel like it looks there is no flow basically I need to put more highlight over here again and maybe one more highlight over here to make this not look like it belongs to one surface uh, so I need some yellow I think to make my work easier so it's the digging time uh, also guys I need to figure out the idea to somehow store like th those tubes of paint because I thought that this would be a good idea but it's uh, basically hard to operate I wonder uh, how it's going the guy who was painting Geralt from the Witcher uh, yeah I, I'm not sure did he, did he ooh, mm, I'm not turning those miniatures over uh, finished paintings it's not finished for sure it may be posted on my discord it's not a uh, work in progress sadly there is no work in progress for him um, but I hope that he will uh, he will be successful with this project because it's very ambitious to paint this big uh, face and he's painting with only with the brush uh, so it may take him some time. Um, okay, I was looking for yellow paint, guys. Uh, I want this one. Maple's red. It's kind of yellow. Um, Oxide yellow. This is a good yellow. Or is this not? It's not yellow. It's brown. Oh my god! It looks yellow on the on the uh, on the tube. Okay, yellow. Give me yellow. Primary yellow. This is not the yellow I'm looking for. I think, but I will add it anyway. I'm looking for yellow oxide, I think. No, not the yellow oxide. Um, so I'm looking for something else. Over it was over here. I remember how it looks. But if I will find it, this is the mm, whole other question. I just have too many paints over here and I try to limit them anyway and there is too much I have a box of paints standing over there and uh, I decided to cut them out from my painting stuff and there is too, ma too many anyway okay I was kind of unsuccessful with this yellow from Naka Galaxy, what do you think about the too big to paint? Uh, I don't think that it's too big to paint. Uh, mm, I know, I would try it out, personally. Uh, if you like to paint with an airbrush, I think that it's a no-brainer, basically. Uh, but also, um, I think that trying out painting with maybe a dry brushing would be cool if you want to create like this more 
um, more detailed texture on it. So, you know, not everything needs to be perfectly smooth and um, smooth and perfectly blend. You can sometimes may use those quicker painting techniques and just detail them later. Uh, so it may be not that hard to actually finish uh, this project. I would paint it, I like it. I was uh, keeping my fingers crossed for, for this project because I think that it's very cool that Piotrek decided to go, uh, go for it. Uh, because those bigger models are harder to produce and also are... Um, they are like bigger risks uh, for the producers um, because the investment is bigger and because the product is uh, more pricey uh, not as many people will uh, buy it uh, so uh, Jesus Christ I just cannot make this lamp work today um, so I was keeping my fingers crossed for Piotrek because uh, this project is pretty cool. Um, I would personally paint it, but I think that I would cut out those little people from around the around the miniature. I think that I would uh, I would cut out those little little figurines all over the lady, and I would take those cuts uh, cuts. Did I say right? Like, okay, like give me a second. Uh, to check out the Neko Galaxy Instagram. Um. Okay, so uh, no news about cats. Sorry guys, um, scratch it out. <laughs> there was no cats info for Neko Galaxy, but I would uh, take some cats um, in 75 millimeter scale and uh, I would glue a cut somewhere uh, or maybe just remove the little people I don't know why I don't like those little pe people personally or I would maybe try to turn it in to turn them into something more detailed um, you know if you personally like those little people I'm okay with that no worries yeah I would personally just try to replace them with something more interesting for me and I would be happy to paint the, that, that one. Okay, it's too bright right now, but I need to build the highlight to again glaze, glaze it over like that. And do you paint much sci-fi? I I actually don't paint uh, almost at all sci-fi. Uh, I've painted some Neko Galaxy, I think. I've painted... Um, I've painted... Uh, uh, like this Reconnect the Bust from Robot Rocket. And um, there is not that much... Uh, that much science uh, sci-fi I like to paint, actually. The, the miniature needs to be um, just right for me. So uh, I would find it interesting. I have um, a commission lined up for Robot Rocket um, bust. Um, I don't remember the name of the bust, but there is the girl ho holding the skateboard. So I will be painting her. And I think that this is a very cool bust for me because I can create a lot of nar narration with it. But I don't personally enjoy a lot of uh, science fiction. Um, I, I, I just prefer fantasy. Uh, does this bust have something in the other arm? No, the other arm is non-existent. Um, this is a very simple bust because uh, this is uh, it's basically an academic bust which is meant for as a like smaller project and the composition is more simple. Uh, and I, I actually like it that they just cut off the, the arm and because it wasn't important for the composition, so it's not there. Uh, I was actually discussing... Uh, oh my god, it's too, too orange right now. And my eraser in the um, 
so my finger didn't work. <laughs> um, I was actually working today with my partner on new, on mood board for my new bust I want to produce, and we were actually discussing uh, if she should have both uh, arms uh, because we were on the same, pa same page with the d detailing and also sometimes the uh, the other hand uh, sometimes they people scab the other hand and actually the hand makes like just true troughs 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 of the composition completely so sometimes it's just better to remove the arm uh, make the hand invisible um, uh, is this bust of girl who is trying to make selfie? No, this is not. Uh, I think that you are uh, talking about Beyond Miniatures bust, and I will be painting Robot Rocket. I can find it for you. Mm. Give me a second, Robot Rocket. Uh, I'm not sure if it's online. Oh. I found something cute. Uh, if it's not in stock, I may not find it. Um, shop. What is it? Uh, it's Noko Bust. Uh, I will uh, paste it in the stream. Give me a second. Oh, do I have the chat? Oh, I can chat over here. Yeah. Uh, so I will paint this one. Um, uh, hi, little cat. So I will paint this one, and uh, my only issue with this, uh, this. Oh, I also. Why do I don't? Why I don't like uh, science fiction? Because I consider some of the science fiction model as over sculpted. Um, and uh, they usually have a lot of detailing and it's too much for me uh, personally and um, this one has a lot of detail but I actually like her face especially in the cat mask uh, I have to talk with the collector which version will uh, choose uh, but like the back of this miniature has a lot a lot of detail and I think that I will struggle with painting it um, and for example, in the science fiction models, I don't enjoy when they have like those all the diff, like cuts and different like um, additions to their physics stuff like that. Um, because why do they have to sculpt it in? Uh, I prefer when the surface is smooth and I can paint something on the surface. So. I don't need all of those cuts and like those different cybernetic, you know, adjustments because they are very easy to paint. And uh, my idea is usually I feel different than the, the basic box art. So um, I just hate the fact that I need to, hey, thank you for the subscribe, uh, for the subscribe, thank you for the sub. Um, uh, I don't like the fact that I need to uh, put more work in this bus to erase the over sculpting and to be able to do the painting um, just to make a slight change basically so I don't know I just consider most of science fiction uh, most of science fiction sci-fi models over sculpted um, fantasy seems to have more character most of the time uh, yeah this is uh, this is true uh, but also, like, for my personal taste, I like, for example, pre Raphaelite uh, paintings. So it's very easy for me to put the themes I enjoy and paint the stuff I want to paint on fantasy miniatures uh, because they just match the inspirations I, I usually follow. And there are people who just prefer to paint, uh, for example, like, um, Warhammerish stuff like a lot of war, uh, guns, stuff like that, and they will, you know, prefer science fiction more. So everything is uh, legit, and uh, just it just depends on on the person uh, who is painting. Uh, 
Okay, so let's just zoom out slightly and let's evaluate. Does the bug look okay uh, or is it too highlighted and it's taking the attention from the face? Hmm, hard to say, hard to say. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Is it okay? Also, the stick is the stick got sticked uh, in the place. I think that I will have to um, take make the, this highlight over here a little bit stronger and then make the rest of the bird a little bit more shiny to in order to make this bug work. But I also think that it would be interesting um, to keep this highlight on this bug because the leaves usually if they are fresh they are quite shiny at least for some plants um, so I think that it could work okay, I will just paint a little bit a uh, brighter highlight on the bird and we will see uh, if it's alright Sometimes you need to do fine tuning on the miniature you're painting. So some values may look too dark or too bright, uh, but if you change other values somewhere else on the bust, they may become just, just right. Uh, that's why I like to um, either squint my eyes and look at the painting and see uh, if the points that are the brightest even when I uh, when the vision is blurred just like my camera um, if the points that are brightest are the points of interest that I wanted to uh, like keep as uh, focal points in my composition then the painting is all right um, and I will keep it the way it was, but sometimes uh, some other stuff gets the uh, the strongest uh, contrast or is the brightest and just uh, steals the attention away from the focal points. And in this case, you should um, just turn it a little bit down and make it not as uh, not as visible. So I will try to. Mm, make those reflections on his uh, Pantene Pro V beautiful bird stronger and also this is not the correct uh, I think that it's, those highlights are too bright I think I will have to take them down a little bit um, also this kind of texture for the brow for, for the bra bird usually is not correct uh, if I was uh, to paint it completely realistically uh, the bird should be much more fuzzy and like uh, coarse and not as smooth and not as beautiful okay maybe maybe Naples red will work actually for the tinting I'm not sure because it's not as uh, saturated as the paint I was using for this bird okay but I think that it's uh, it will do the job Also, fantasy uh, for me uh, can be very easily tilted from being whimsical and fun into being very serious, and it's easy to change the mood in fantasy. And with science fiction, I find find I find science fiction much more serious and less whimsical, basically. So I I'm just not that much into it. In general, hmm. okay, I will keep this back as it is for now, but this is the point uh, when I'm putting the pin, uh, I'm keeping the pin in uh, in this point, let's call it like that, and I know that I may have to revisit it in the future. Uh, I think that this is the good. Um, 
good time to uh, paint some irises uh, for this guy and I want the irises to be very colorful and I think that blue uh, green or maybe they should be blue I will go for this color um, because I want to for them to stand out more Yeah, I think that blue is the in the direction. Hi Kudo. I painted the back, but I'm not sure if it's uh, if the highlight is not too bright. I'm keeping it like that for now, but um, uh, is that Caribbean Carib Caribbean blue? No, it's uh, I think that it may be basically, but uh, in my uh, my painting universe is just turquoise. This is this from Uptainong. Yeah, this I think that this is this paint. Um, I think that uh, Caribbean Caribbean seas may be turquoise, so it may be turquoise, turquoise, turquoise. This is one of the most confusing uh, painting names for me. Turquoise and Ptalo? Or Falto? Uh, with some time I will get it right. Okay, so we are painting eyes so we can zoom. And you can see how I struggle with painting eyes. And maybe you may become less scared of painting eyes yourself this way. Because you will see how much I struggle. And that is not always perfect. Also, when I'm not painting on my knee, it's, it takes me usually... Okay, it's not bad. But usually it takes a uh, longer time for me to get stuff right uh, when I'm painting such a small detailing. Oh my god, yeah, the struggle is real. Actually, okay, it's not that bad. Um, that said, I will probably destroy it in in like next three brush strokes. Mm, when you are painting eyes, uh, you have the choice of painting the outline. So basically, the lashes either inside the eye or on the on the eyelid if you will stick to the eyelid the eye will look bigger and more open and if you will overpaint the dark line inside the eye but going on the whites of the eye then you will make the eye look much smaller and people are often not aware about that and then their eyes look not suboptimal. Sub, sub, sub um, so just know that you can really change the size of the eye with the right color placement and the shadows and highlights. I did a very nice presentation on contrast miniature painting uh, this year, but they d didn't release the tapes yet.
So for him right now, can I zoom? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, for him right now, the issue is for me. Like I know that the eyes are very small, but I really care about the detailing, so I will try to get them right. For me, the issue for him right now is that um, is that this eye over here is like the iris is too long so i will try to make it slightly shorter mm, and we will see how successful will i be uh, in a second Okay, I added the underpainting of the lighter to bring back the white of the eye and now I just need to paint a darker line somewhere to create the roundness of the iris again. And also I can change the um, like amount, the level of openness of his eye. And I can just take a darker color. I will go with burnt amber and paint gray. And uh, hey, thank you for follow. And I will just paint a line and be lower maybe. And this will make his eye slightly and uh, let's open. I hope that there is a visible difference because uh, I like it slightly more. And hmm, I think that moving this highlight slightly lower by overpainting the top part of it is the key to make it work. Is it? Or is it not? Mr. Druid, please, co please cooperate with me. Mm, oh, thank you for the ride. We are painting a Mr. Druid, basically. Okay, see, I overpainted the top, up, top part of the highlight and it works slightly better. Um, hey! Uh, so yeah, I repaint the highlight, but a little bit lower. Uh, it's too low right now. So slightly higher, and now I suppose it will be too high. No, it's all right right now. Uh, okay, so we'll go back to turquoise, turquoise, and. Paint the color of the iris. Ah, oh, I overpainted it. So we'll have to go back into the dark, into the darkness, uh, and overpaint the the border of the iris. To make it even. Uh, thank you. Happy. That you like it. This is Mr. Druid. Uh, he has a very dope uh, grass hoodie, which I will be finishing in like my next streams. Uh, maybe next week, but I'm not sure because I will be painting a miniature from Inno Kingdoms. Um, but I want to paint him, like finish painting him. This is a project for myself actually, so it's staying with me, it's not going to a collector. Uh, so I like it even more. <laughs> mm, yes. Yeah, so going back to white, uh, white reflection. Does it work? Mm, kinda, kinda works. So yeah, this is basically my method for painting nice eyes. I just go over and over with different approaches 
and try to make it work and sometimes uh, I get it right on my first attempt but if I don't get it right I just redo it into oblivion and that's why it looks good because I just repeat 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 and try to refine everything uh, so don't be discouraged if something doesn't work the first time for you because it usually doesn't work for me either do you find you take less care on things you paint for yourself than someone else uh, no i like my philosophy in painting uh, is uh, that usually the kids any kind of kit, it doesn't matter if it's Warhammer or if it's uh, Spira Mirabilis, like any kind of re resin kit. The miniature comes to me in parts, right? So it doesn't matter uh, that it may be in parts at any level, like any stage of painting. Uh, it matters that at the end it will be, first of all, uh, in one piece and of course if the client wants to write uh, if it needs to be uh, in one piece it must be in one piece and then all of the pieces may be it must be secured so they won't fall apart and then uh, the shipping must be safe so it won't get uh, broken in the shipping but sometimes uh, sometimes it's hard to secure so you know you have to inform the client but uh, i would i usually do the same level of Pre pre prep prep work and um, you know uh, the taking care of the same stuff like with this one I was unlucky because my cat just decided to bonk it from the uh, from the desk uh, usually I put the miniatures I paint aside on the on this beautiful calax where the cat, cat cannot uh, reach them. Uh, uh, but usually I take the same level of care for myself uh, I wouldn't pin, pin something for example and for my clients I would pin slash would use better glue um, just for the sake of like uh, you know first of all doing the good service and second of all um, having the miniature not fall, fall apart uh, during shipping yeah and you know like i also don't paint for myself that much uh, so the issue is not there for me uh hey naive kids paint Na naive kids paint i hope that i got it right thank you very much yeah, I will try to make them right, by, but I need uh, I need a little bit of, like, my wet palette right now looks like this. I need a little bit of uh, skin color to overpaint the unevenness of the eyelids. So, yeah. Putting it over there. Um... If you are curious about the paint I'm using most, uh, the skin tone usually is P3, uh, medium flesh, my favorite. I like it because it's satin and it mixes well with other paints. Uh, and I use mostly Aptilium Dance Acrylics and then some of AK Interactive Third Gen paints. And then my favorite highlight color is the Nara Yellow from Sky75. Um, stop eating paint uh, but maybe the paint uh, tastes good so so maybe it's worth to eat paint uh, Minyang did a brilliant video about eating paint so it, 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 it it's not that bad probably okay so the detail detailing Um, very oil paint look. Yeah, thank you. I think that is because I um, I don't blend that much, in particular this project. 
uh, and then because I sketch all over and then refine. So at this stage of painting, uh, it makes look it may looks look more painterly like. Stronger zoom. Uh, if you will uh, stare at this guy for like five minutes and then you will repeat four times I like squirrels uh, he will blink, blink at you yeah it's, uh, perfect blending is not always uh, important in painting so you know I may not perfectly blend this one in particular because this is my personal project fuck yeah and it's for me. Hey Dono, thank you for uh, for the big great party ride. Whoop, 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 whoop. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Trent, I'm not sure if you are here. Yeah, you are here. Did you paint or did you uh, did you game today? I've seen that you are uh, streaming some uh, Kingdom Death lately. Ooh, Dwarf Diorama. I had to check it out. Uh, how many dwarves are on this diorama? And from which uh, company are the dwarves? Yeah, it's not meant to be looked at from six inches away. And also, you know, on the internet, the blends uh, look perfect and nice on the big because zoom like right now you can see it on, on the camera when it's like i don't know six times bigger than in the reality but in reality when you look at even unblended miniature it usually looks all right mm. Do I have the black crow on the boar and the ragecraft rage guy with the wolf? Mm, I don't know the ra 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 ragecraft guy. Thank you for soap. Uh, I don't know the... the um, what is the company? Ragecraft, but I have to check it out. And the guy on the boar is so cool. So this is... Uh, I presume that this is, this is not the... like very big project for you like just judging by the scale of your other dioramas okay guys i will do something that may be controversial for some of you but i will cut out something from this miniature because i don't like it chop chop There is a great song by Auntie Donna, Chop Chop, and I'm doing doing it just now. Uh, it's uh, no, it's a small project only two models. Yeah, but sometimes the two models can be pretty big, like this, like this big. I think it is Galactus from uh, Marvel, right? He's he's a one model, but he's pretty big. You have to admit. Got it. Top, top, top. Sometimes it's worth because it turns out that there was, I think it's something in the primer and it was stuck over here and was disfiguring this beautiful eye. So I got it right. I now have the chop chop song in my head.
Mm, so this side of the nose wasn't painted that much, so I will just go back to, to this and try to paint it. Um, the issue with this, this element over here is that there's a very strong shadow casted by other elements of this miniature. Um, so I think that I will paint it a little bit brighter than I usually would, because the shadow will make it darker anyway. And for me this is the way, way to solve uh, some of those problems. And I have a very dark line over here, so I will try to paint it with just a like slightly darker base skin, skin, skin tone. And I will see how it will behave. Because it was too dark right now when it was painted dark, so maybe... Okay, I think that I will shade it a little bit. Uh, but sometimes when the sculpt in very deep elements casts um, two strong shadows, I just paint them in a neutral color and don't shade it at all. Uh, similar case is with the color bone. Uh, if color bone is sculpted very, very strongly, very, very, very dark, like not dark, very deep on the, especially on the character that is not meant to be very, um, very thin or very malnourished, I will paint it with just base color and keep it uh, un unshaded because the sculpt will cast the shadow anyway. Uh, what's your thoughts on sketching? Some people swear by it, other people avoid it completely. Um, I personally recommend sketching. And uh, when I do my workshops, I actually always start with sketching. Um, because uh, personally, uh, I am the sketching person. And for me, it's important to just place the ideas on the miniature and know what I want to do uh, and because of sketching and because I place all of those ideas uh, I can instantly evaluate if they work or if I should change it, change them a little bit so I get this very very important piece of informa information from sketching mm. and for me right now it works mostly um, like that and for my students or like basically anyone, I, I recommend sketching because uh, especially if you want to learn, um, you, when you sketch and you have to fill all of the elements of the bus like from the beginning of your project, first of all, you are making, you have those dec decisions made uh, about what you want to place in all of the areas or at least most of the areas and you have those decisions so you know what you want to paint in this miniature um, and because you know what you want to paint uh, it's easier for you to learn uh, like to get this lesson from this project because you know where first of all you are going and second of all you can identify uh, if your direction is right if your ideas uh, are working together nicely if actually the stuff you want to achieve if you if you are actually achieving it and you can see right away uh, if you are going in the good direction or in the like right direction or maybe if the good direction wasn't right for you uh, and you can you know modify it and change it slightly uh, so i recommend sketching just just for this point of having like easier uh, learning curve on most of your projects and also if you want to take a lesson or give the feedback like give your miniature for a feedback mm, your like the 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 person you want to have this knowledge from um, knows better uh, like have has more information about your painting and can answer easier like um, if, 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 if it works or if it doesn't work. And sketching. 
um, is um, I think that it's important for your like mental health during, during pa painting because when you sketch you are actually like pulling up like pulling up mm, uh, like uh, defining the areas one by one uh, and just leveling up the whole uh, painting in stages so you can see the project progressing and you can see the end line uh, because you have the plan which you placed on the miniature right away uh, so I find it um, better for your mind basically to sketch because you know where you are going you can see the end effect to some degree and you are ha much happier with the painting um, I do uh, yes I do pr private lessons I also do workshops um, and of course I have patreon Mm, yeah, about the private lessons, I don't have any kind of like a website. Um, so you can just, uh, if you are interested, you can uh, just hit me up on Discord or Instagram, and uh, we can discuss. Yeah, um, and I can like I'm doing sometimes uh, like um, written feedback or a. Uh, one on one calls with something similar to my feedback stream actually. If you want a quick feedback, you can put your work in progress uh, pictures with maybe some kind of description on my Discord channel in comment and criticism uh, channel. Um, I will do feedback stream, I think that on uh, November 18th. I'm not sure if I remember it, not 18th. 21, 21st, something like that. I will po po I will do a feedback back stream this month and you can just put your miniature on my Discord channel and I will uh, give give uh, feedback on, on stream. Um, what do you think about Monte San Savino? Is it worth to go next year? Um, I don't, I wasn't, uh, I didn't participate in any of Monte San Savino's either this year or like previously, so I don't have uh, an opinion. I personally want to go next year. Um, I think that is worth to go to the competitions. Um, there is like different inside politics when you are deeper into this, you know, painting wor world, but in general, my opinion is that no matter the dramas, no matter the stuff around it, it's usually worth just go put your pieces into the competition, not to win, but to just, you know, have your works placed in so, uh, you know, other people can uh, look at it. And so we basically make it seen by other people and then you can discuss with other people about your projects uh, because they can see it. And it's worth to go because you can place your uh, pieces on the display. Uh, you can talk with people and this is actually the most important uh, stuff about any kind of this kind of events. You can discuss with people and you can meet other painters. I find it very motivating. Um, and then you can uh, go for beers or for after party and this is like the another <laughs> another very important uh, factor for me. And also you can, uh, you know, seeing others work uh, in real life, of course, is very important because uh, most of miniature art uh, is a traditional art shared by pictures and usually those pictures don't don't uh, give the justice. Either pictures make something look better or worse, but almost never the same. Uh, so it's worth attending just to have like this confrontation between between reality and internet, uh, and also the shopping, um, just going around seeing different uh, different producers, miniatures, uh, talking with the producers, uh, meeting the painters, uh, asking for feedback. It's always worth uh, going uh, going to. And Monte San Savino has a very big advantage, uh, the Italian food, of course. So I want to go, I want to attend, uh, I want to meet with people and eat good stuff. So maybe next year, I hope so at least. Um, yeah. 
Um, how to get to Poland for the workshop? Sadly, I would love to go. The comments you gave me last time were very helpful. Thanks. Uh, always happy to help. Uh, I'm actually uh, doing workshop in right now in London and in uh, Copenhagen. So if you are from like those places, um, I think that Copenhagen signups are already like online. Um, but uh, for the, the London wasn't announced yet. But if you are interested, just uh, let me the let, let me know in some kind of DM or email, and I will I can send you more detail. Mm. One in London. Um, it's um, I think like uh, February. 14 and 15 or 15 and 16 uh, yeah, let me look uh, February okay sorry um, sc scratch that uh, 10 and 11 I think so at least yeah I have to con confirm it but uh, 10 and 11 I suppose And the London workshops will be painting a miniature from Carlo Miniatures. Uh, he has like this uh, girl with the cigarettes, so we'll be painting this one. Very interesting, your young family though, so it's hard. Yeah, I understand, I know. And also it's today, so I know that it's uh, for some people it may be uh, harder to organize this much free time uh, on weekends. But I have the feedback stream, so you know we can just post uh, post your paintings then and just have have like this very concentra concentrated feedback from me. Uh, from there, if you are interested, of course. See, so I worked a bit more around the eye, and also because uh, I kept the colors very light, he looks more youthful. I kind of don't like this look uh, completely. I think that I would like to change it slightly. Uh, I don't know how yet. Uh, I need to paint like the other eye. I think that it's too... Um, the outer uh, corner is a bit too high. Uh, it's because the dark color uh, goes very high over here. So I will try to make this outer um, corner of his eye look a little bit lower with... Um, by taking the lighter paint and just painting more of the light uh, over here it may be too light uh, also this um, lights my lights are very strong and in real life it's not that visible so something like this making his eye a bit less open because the uh, lid uh, eyelid is more visible, so it's dragging the eye a little bit lower. It's too bright right now. Hmm. So uh, I will go with brown and make it slightly darker, and I think that I will keep it like that. Too brown. Um, love Carla miniatures. I have a Harald the Troll, but a bit scared to paint at, uh, at this moment. Um, I can like respect being too scared of the project and maybe waiting for a bet better time, but also it's not worth to be uh, too scared of the project because um, 
uh, unless you will just basically build a new miniature with the texture of the paint uh, while painting, you can just overpaint everything. So, you know, we can just start painting if, if you will feel that it's too much for you. Um, you can uh, you can restart basically so don't be too afraid uh, but if you really like the sculpt uh, you can also just display it somewhere on the shelf so it won't be forever alone in your uh, miniature stash i like to I, I actually because i don't paint that much for myself uh, i have a little display which i have to make better but i have this little display of the bus I really like and I just uh, keep them there uh -huh. and I don't have to paint everything okay I'm take I usually don't like this theory of the um, uh, of the uh, what is the proper correct English name for it um, of the colors inside something so um, not, not under colors uh, I don't remember the correct name but uh, usually when when you have the skin uh, for example you have like uh, secondary colors not uh, I don't think that it's secondary under painting not under painting um, when you have, for example, skin color and you have green under undertones, undertones. I don't like paint when uh, like people go too deep into undertones in uh, miniature painting, because when you are painting the miniature, you have to look at this miniature and just like like right now it's this big, so you can see this corner of the eye, which I painted slightly red to see how it will work because I feel that it's off, right? Usually when I paint the eye, I, it, I add either very little pink just in the corner or no pink at all. Uh, and you can see it because like the, right now, this on my screen is like in the size of the actual bust, right? So you can see it on very big close up and this under under color uh, um, under color under shade, I forgot again like the name for it, yeah. But um, undertone, yeah. I will write it in the chat to remember. Jesus Christ, undertone, got it. Okay, so this undertone uh, is visible over here because it's very very big and detailed. But in reality, this is like. This miniature is this small and uh, it is in the of the size of the like maybe a person standing like I don't know how many meters from you like 20 meters maybe maybe less uh, but usually when you look at someone and someone is standing very far from far, very, very far away from you you cannot see all of the detail in his face and i personally my logic for like my you know my principle in painting is to paint as many detail in, in detail in the bust as you can see in someone uh, standing like as far away from you um, so that like his head would be as big as your bust uh, as the bust you are painting basically so if i was to put this bust like over here and I would see in the background the guy and his head would be the same size as the head of the miniature I'm painting. This is the amount of detail I want, I want to put in my miniature. Usually the undertones are visible when the zoom is this big. Thank you for the follow. Um, and this size of this bust, like this size of the, um, of the head is like comparable to a portrait, like to the portrait that you would hang on the wall. Uh, usually the portraits get even bigger, so we have like those, all of those tiny features blow up like even bigger. So, and you know, when the artist is painting something, he needs to make it interesting. 
So when the guy has the task of painting like this big eye or this big da- big eye and like what, compare this big eye to my eye, um, he has to put some detail in it. So the painters are eager to paint those undertones and uh, the, all of those little veins. Um, and you know, when you have like this big head on the wall, it looks okay. All of the details are fine. All of the undertones are okay. But when you have like this little, you know, little guy, those undertones are hard to notice. So I don't like when people put all of those undertones. Thank you for the sub. Uh, when you, when people are trying to put all of those undertones in the miniature, um, those undertones usually are so over dramatized, like visually they are very dramatic. And for example, you know that a people like a people that people have like this little uh, pink red dot inside of the uh, eye, like in the corner of the eye. So you want to put it over there because especially on the photo on like this biggest zoom, you can see this corner of the eye. But in reality, if you will put this redness in the corner of the of, of the eye of your miniature, uh, it's completely like it, uh, in reality it it will it's as red as the eye of someone that has a very strong eye irritation of or pink eye, basically. So continuing this logic, I personally don't like when people pull that many undertones in the skins, in the skin. Uh, or anything basically, but the skin is the you know biggest offender because people like to compare uh, 2D painting to miniature painting, uh, and you know the scales are completely different, the detail is completely different. Different uh, creating composition in miniature painting and uh, in 2D painting is completely different as well. Um, in particular, in particular, if you want to make the miniature work from different angles and not from only this one. Uh, so uh, you, you you cannot take the theory from uh, to the traditional painting and put everything into um, miniature painting and also the undertones uh, knowledge uh, is kind of um, uh, wow for most people because this is like something that everyone can see but not everyone knows about it. So not everybody realized that you can see all of those interesting colors in, in the human being actually. And when people hear about it or about the green uh, in the skin uh, or the green underpainting for painting skin, they are like, wow, I need to use it. Uh, so it's a nice way to marketize your artistry, uh, basically. Um, but it's a nice, not nice way to paint uh, everything. Uh, so, continuing my ta- tangent or finalizing it, um, I usually don't like to add pink in the corner of the eye because basically I don't want my miniatures to have pink eye. Um, and I try to do it because this miniature, and I think that this is the issue of the, uh, of the scalp, has like this strange little detail over here. And I can see that there is over here, there is a very small crevice that makes the eye look, look bad. And over here, I have this real eye co- co- corner of the eye. And I have to try a few, few times to make it work and to make it uh, look aesthetically pleasing on the close up, of course. Mm, because I want to put those uh, detailed pictures on the internet. Um, if I was to paint it uh, just for myself and not care about the reception, I think that I would just uh, leave it uh, like that unpainted. Uh, but I will just try out a few ways to make it make it um, tight, tight, tidier. I don't know how to say it. More tidy. Um, yeah. But going back for the undertones, uh, don't overdo it, guys. Especially with the pink eye. I find that so many people just overdo the eye because they heard that the, the, the eye has like this pink stuff in the corner and then uh, you can see veins 
in someone's eyes if someone didn't uh, sleep for a long time. And you know, we want to put all of those details, but the eye is like the size of the um, top of the needle. So not everything um, is uh, is like uh, adjust adjustable for miniature painting, basically. And then, like, f like I can like let's uh, round a little bit more. People always overpaint the pink in the eye, but a lot of people again, like on the other hand, forget about brows. And what is mo more important in the like your rece reception of someone's face? Is it a um, little pink dot in the eye corner, or is it a actually biggest brow visible? Hey hey, yes, I am on IG. I think that I'm orage.art or orage art. You can just type Natalia Orage. Yeah. Um, would you rather be music famous or movie famous? Hmm. Uh, I would rather be uh, movie famous, but I would like to do um, like work in mu movies, but not to be the movie star, basically. So I would like to work even either on costuming, on the set design um, or stuff like that. So, for example, like my favorite dream dream job, if I was to uh, start, if I was to uh, start working for someone, like for a company, my dream job is to move to New Zealand and start working for Weta workshops, <laughs> for example, because I I think that I would find myself uh, like working for like the day job uh, in something like that. Uh, so yeah, I would be. I would like to be a, a Weta Workshop movie famous, basically. Okay, so I just added a little bit of grey in the corner of the eye. Uh, it's okay, because it doesn't bring the attention to the corner, and the corner is in a way, like, fucked up. Yeah, so um, I think that I may add a little bit of actually highlight reflection, because those reflections usually works good in the eye corner. Did it make it? Yes, it worked. So I will keep it like that. No redness. Mm, thank you, I try my best. I also didn't post there um, anything uh, reasonable for time. <laughs> and I have to start posting uh, on my social media basically. Yeah, but subscribe guys, follow me. I want uh, 10k followers uh, before the end of the year. Uh, that's why I don't post on my Instagram at all. <laughs> so it became a little bit dead, but it doesn't matter. Uh, also, if you want to watch v VODs of my streams, you can uh, find me on YouTube and I post uh, like all old uh, streams over there or repost. Uh, if I have any any like Warhammer fans, I, I want to start painting Warhammer in the future. Uh, so you may find some uh, quality uh, content over there. Sorry guys for the... It's losing a little bit of the um, focus, but I hope that it's not a big offender for you. Oh my god! I'm afraid that I will break the stuff again. Mm -mm. Did it work? Did I fix it? Yeah, I this I fixed it. Uh, when I have an issue painting some surfaces, in particular like little details, I just turn turn the miniature around and just just stick my brush uh, in the place and hope that it will work. It usually does, mm, so I recommend this te technique. Okay, repeat. I think that it will be too bright, but let, let's see. 
let's check it. Yeah, it's too bright. I also put a mushroom in yellow paint or green paint. Mm. Um, I prefer 3D sculpts because they usually are a little bit more, um, I don't know, cleaned up before casting and don't have some of the problematic uh, detailing and for example here on the eye this is very small detail uh, that has some of the detailing left after the sculpting and it's making my painting slightly uneven and you know if you have the patience to clean it up with your painting then it's all right but i i i'm usually very irritated when the sculpt makes my painting um, harder. Hmm. Uh, I think that I will just darken the inner corner. It's darker uh, anyway, but <laughs> uh, also it's not that important um, in reality because it will be hidden in the shadow um, when lit from the from the top. And right now I have very strong lighting from the sides. Mm -mm. Cleaning up the um, wrinkles. Also, guys, when you have a uh, person with with wrinkles to paint, don't highlight and don't shade uh, every wrinkle um, because usually it's just enough to highlight it. If the wrinkle is supposed to be very dark, for example, like this place over here, uh, you can shade it slightly but just remember that uh, highlighting and shading everything will uh, usually makes it much more dramatic and wrinkles on the skin are um, for the most, most part pretty um, pretty delicate and s smooth uh, so if you will shade every wrinkle in the person face, it will make uh, the person look like it's almost disintegrating. Uh, that same goes for undertones uh, in the older people. Um, people love to paint like all of those uh, blue, green, violet undertones in the older people faces, for example, and they make them look like they are uh, about to die in like five seconds. Right now with this guy, uh, it won't be that visible in the in reality. It's not that visible in general, but because this eye doesn't have like this darker eye, a uh, darker line uh, around the um, lower eyelid, and this over here is very visible. The eye look like they are the eyes look like they are from uh, like they are completely different so I need to like even it out in a way and I think that I will start with making um, this eye corner a bit darker oh Valkay from Neko is very cool yeah I, I remember I did the feedback for her very uh, doing very good job by the way
My cat wants to come in. Wait a second, guys. That's working again. This is Loki. Hey guys. Hello. Very cute. Uh, yeah. Uh, Valkyrie is very interesting. Um, she's like this is the one of the science fiction models I would actually like to paint. Cut break. Cute, cute. Very cute. This is this is the one who broke my miniature, but he's so sweet that it's hard to not uh, forgive him. Mwah. He was here for like five minutes and he already wants to go out. What a god. Mm. Mm. For me for me in Valke is the hair in general, but also she has very cute face. I painted it lighter and I don't like it. Damn it! Now he looks like he's looking up and I don't want that. The hair is the tra challenge. Yeah, hair is uh, harder to get right. Uh, think about the hair like. It's a ribbon. And don't paint too much detail. Look, if I like it without the extra lighting. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I won't overpaint it, uh, overpaint it more. He is already rocking, rocking it, doing very, very good. Trying to move this one eye more to the middle, so I painted the the frame around the iris, and now I will paint lighter color inside of it, and now I will paint the black dot in the middle of the eye. And let's see. Okay, I fixed it. The, the, the issue was that the irises weren't even and I hate it. They are still not perfectly even, but I know that I'm going in the right direction. Also, this is like the... Uh, the amount of detailing you don't have to care about if you are not very much into uh, painting something perfectly. And I usually with my busts I like to have a nice face and 
uh, express expressive face, so I like to overdo the eyes. Mm. Now I need to round it a little bit and I think it will be done with it pretty soon. Okay, let's see. I got this random darker mm, dot so let's get rid of it and hope that it won't spoil anything yeah I got it okay so I have nice eyes mm. uh, also I think that this wrinkle over here may be too dark slightly at least it shouldn't be as dark like for the whole length of it, of it so I will just uh, go over it with um, a thin layer of basic skin tone and uh, thank you for the follow <laughs> Uh, guys, you can post your works in my chat if you want uh, to share them. Okay, let's see. Uh, I think that I overdid it, uh, kinda. But also, you can see over here that the scalp is so strong that you can see this line anyway. Um, if you will, uh, like, if the line would stay in a natural color, uh, his face uh, would be like would look full fuller and a little bit younger and uh, if he if i will keep it uh, like shaded uh, he will look a little bit thinner mm, so you can with just sometimes with just a slight, slight change you can change the look of the of the character uh, very strongly actually I think that I would like him to be a little bit thinner and a little bit older, so I will make this uh, wrinkle a little bit stronger. Uh, I just need to clean up around his um, nose to make everything uh, even and nice Are you guys going for a golden demon next year? Mm, hey, hey, Scott. Mm, and I think that I will underline this. Um, this um, eye back over here uh, because uh, I did it on the other side and they are both very strongly sculpted 
so I think that it's fair to make them both very strong. Um, what am I making? Uh, some cinch files. Post them! A wrinkle in the um, around like over here. I was trying. I will try to stay more in the middle of the camera since it got the focus again. Um. Hey hey! Thank you for the follows. Mm, okay, I will check it out. <laughs> Ooh, a lot of sculpting. Much wow. Props for uh, for the patience for sculpting like those uh, little uh, scales. Okay, so I think that this wrinkle worked very well. Very cool uh, resculpts. Mm -hmm want them to line up on a big base. Oh my god. Well, this is a proper cinch. <laughs> Damn, very nice. Yeah, I kinda imagine cinch right just like that. Like the cinch content. The Warhammer version is like kinda prettier than it should be. And now, instead of, instead of like getting this darker line even longer, we will go into a lighter color and actually highlight. And again, I'm turning the miniature around uh, to make it easier and more even. Did it work? Yeah, it did. I think that we are lacking some wrinkles over here because it's very smooth. So I will go in a slight, uh, slightly. Oh shit! Uh, I will go in a slightly darker. Um, skin tone and just maybe add something over here did it work no it actually didn't work and it underlined the stuff i didn't want to show so we'll go back and paint it lighter mm, what can i do how can I change it to make it look good? Hmm. Maybe like that. Over here. Mm, no. Dark. 
Hmm. Okay, this is basically a very strong overanalyze of a detail that is almost invisible. Hmm. Let's keep it darker. Oh yeah, I like it more right now. Uh, also, it's a lot darker than it maybe should be. Uh, so I will go into the highlight and I will try to highlight it. Over here maybe? Make the eye box more buggy. The issue of this cut is that this eye corner is kind of lower than this one. So I think that I need to go with the lighter color and just paint this over here. Jesus Christ, why, why it has to be so hard? Okay, I think that it, it will work better than this. How to make it work? Very complicated, not wow. Okay, but well, I think it is better now. So I may go in a darker color and add a line again over here. How it works? How it looks? I think that it looks now all right. And before it was kind of wonky. Mm. For me, it looks sometimes that one of his eyes lays deeper in his socket than the other one. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's like that. Because this one actually is kind of deeper, and this one is a little bit higher, but also it's rounder to the top. Like you can see it maybe in a way, so it's hard to and all of his features are very very deep, so it's hard to make it work. But also it looks like this from because of very strong lighting. Uh, maybe I would turn this off. It's more even, but also like putting this light source a little bit more away. I have very strong lighting in general right now, so see, right now when this corner is hidden in the shadow, I think that it looks uh, more even. And also this is like more realistic level of detail and this is this is how it looks. Even, it's even smaller, on, um, at least on my monitor, so. Yeah, but I'm happy with the eyes, so I think that I will leave them alone like that. I may revisit some of the wrinkles later. Uh, I also think that like this, uh, maybe not, like this wrinkle looks very dark, but also it's cut it this way, so I cannot change that much. Um, so yeah, it looks like that today. Um, I'm pretty happy with his face. Uh, yeah. It's pretty nice, pretty good. Also, my uh, face cam started working. Nice. You can admire for at least a little bit the makeup I did today. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think that I will be finishing the stream today because it's almost 1 a.m. 
uh, in Poland. Uh, so this is the guy. I've painted the eyes and the back. The plan was a little bit bigger and different because I wanted to paint his um, his shirt. Mm, but I will do it maybe tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow at the similar time I will be streaming again. Um, hey, hey, thank you for the follows, guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, let me have a look on the Twitch on who can I... Uh, I will maybe put him over here and I will put this miss missus over here. Um, I will paint her a little bit more today, I think like for maybe for an hour, maybe she will be better tomorrow and I can show it off uh, on, on the stream. Uh, let me have a look on who can I write today. Do you have any, guys, do you have any propositions about who can we write? Um, Mm -mm. Do I follow anyone that's online right now? There really should be a, a miniature painting. Uh, there should be really miniature painting, um, uh, like zone on which. Um, Radagast the brown vibes. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was uh, I was thinking uh, on the like two streams ago if I should uh, add the bird poop <laughs> somewhere over here. Uh, yeah, very cool stuff and a lot of knowledge. Really happy that I found the stream. Yeah, I'm happy to serve basically. So um, if you will have the opportunity, you can come by like, next time. Pun expected painting. Uh, let me have a look on his channel or her I don't want to assume oh limbo division uh, yeah so uh, it was slash right and uh, Nick right okay guys so um, painting right okay I, I hope that I got it right. I'm I'm not used for uh, Twitch. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Um, uh, thank you for the follow as well. Thank you for the follows and the uh, subscriptions. Uh, if you have free and unused Twitch uh, sub, uh, please sub me and follow me on uh, my Instagram. The I think that the link is somewhere in the description and uh, i will be streaming tomorrow at the similar time so i'm i will start around uh, 9 to 10 uh, pm cet so the central europe time uh, so thank you for watching and see you next time bye 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 <laughs>